having your extension back in the day. Right. Um, and now, like, it's crazy. I still work out of Brooklyn, you know. Um, I'm an artist, and that's, it's crazy, because I've been known I'm a target for, you know, at least the last 10 years. I definitely, like, could verbalize and identify what was going on the last 10 years of my life, and I don't know, like, they can't, you know how people, like, you get friend requests, and you're like, I don't know you, and you don't take them, you know, because you know you're a target, you don't want to let in the wrong people, so it's, because, because of, like, what happened, that guy, like, he knew me from our childhood, but when we were kids, like, he was a little out there, you know, he was a little weird, um, okay, I used to go to the limelight. Have you ever heard of that? I, actually, I have. All right, we all, all these kids, because I'm from New Jersey, but where I'm from in New Jersey, I'm closer to Manhattan than Brooklyn. That part of New Jersey is closer to New York City than Brooklyn and Queens. I know, like, a lot of people don't realize how close that area and how urban it is. It's... You go through the tunnel, you're there in 10 minutes and 42nd Street. So I grew up literally looking at the whole New York skyline. That's a whole, we're, you're up on a cliff and you can see the whole skyline. The river's right there. So I grew up very close to New York City. 10 are minutes. you, are you Italian? No, I'm Irish. Okay, okay. Uh, so, so Russian. like, so do, do Russians, like Russians and Italian, Italians in New York, they, do they get along or not get along? No, they're different, very different, which is crazy that I was even born, right? <laughs> but yeah, they're very two different, um, two different kinds of cultures. Completely. What, what Russian about the people. Russian mob? The Russian mafia, does it really exist in New York? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Is it worse but, than the Italian mafia? Or? Yeah, 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 they're very scary people. <laughs> um, they're all business people, like the mob, you don't know. Like, you, they're just business people. They're people that have businesses. Like, it's hard to, like, pin what the mob is. They're people that own businesses, and they network. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. And then they get into the politics, you know? Like, usually, the, their second generation, like, their kids will somehow get in politics. You know what I mean? And that's how the whole system and area gets so... Um, corrupted and infiltrated by these cultures and these people does that make sense but they're not like you know people think the mob they think it's a bunch of guys hanging out in a social club just selling drugs running numbers no i don't want to particularly like point out a company or a business but they own uh, well you know restaurants they own the garbage you know you know though like like the depiction, like the depiction, like the depiction of the mob, I think, in today's world, they still try to depict the mob like they were back in like the, the, the like, 40s. yeah, the 40s or like the, like at least like the 60s or something. You know what I'm saying? Like those older, yeah. old, like those older movies when they still got people like that around, of course, but the, like the, the, the families who own everything in the mob, like they've, they've like moved up and like they own like judges and, corporations yes. they own like you know they own stock in the they own stock in the in the military and, and prison systems and stuff and yeah it's like they're worth like they're they got lawyers in there like the godfather part three how he was talking about he how he needed more lawyers you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like they got lawyers and all this stuff and they it's not like what people you know what i mean like even no. street even street gangs aren't what they used to be if you look if you if you go back and you look at pictures of like of of black street gangs like if you look at pictures in los angeles of black street gangs in the 80s and the 70s you compare them to now now they're all on like facebook and twitter and they're like famous rappers now they didn't have they call yeah no what do they call that whole movement like the enlightened movement in the black community what is that called um what is that called yeah i mean i don't mean that's probably not the best example but no you're right they're 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 online and nobody's like identifying them. Like, well, actually, they do still identify, right? You know, they wear it. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Do you watch like Hassan Campbell? Do 
you know who he is? He's from my area. What's his name? Hassan Campbell. Uh uh. You know who? Oh, you gotta look him up. You know, um, not the Sugar Hill Gang. Oh wait, I gotta look it up. I haven't looked at him in a long time. He outed. Hold on, let me. You're gonna be like, oh shit, not Tribe Called Quest. He got molested by like not not Sugar Hill Gang. Hold on. He lives right here, like close to me too. Oh man, where the hell is my computer? Wait till you hear this. You're gonna be like, oh damn. The conscious moving in. That's what I was trying to say. Hang on, my computer's dead. I gotta look on my phone. You know what the Zulu Nation oh, is? Oh, yeah, yeah, the Zulu Nation. Yeah, well, the guy from Zulu Nation lived in his area in the Bronx, and all the kids, because he was like a rapper and had money, he used to, like, prey on all the kids in his neighborhood. Hassan Campbell's an adult now, and he's on YouTube, like, yo, these people. He was part of the Zulu Nation, too, and apparently he got molested by him as a kid. Yeah, yeah, yep, there's people, yep. there's people coming out now. Saying, I heard that. I read. I read an article saying that he was molesting some of the younger children, and it could be, you know, like you know, like Jay oh, Jay Z is a part of the five percenters, yeah. and the five percenters is like the same thing, like the Black yeah. Consciousness Movement in New York, and like you got uh, the Moors and what's the other groups? You got a bunch of other groups. A lot of them are like prison. To be honest with you, a lot of that prison stuff. Prison gangs. Yeah, a lot of that stuff comes from prisons. A lot of black people go to prison, end up becoming Muslims, and end up reading a few books, and then they then they start some little gang in prison, and then they come out to the streets. I got friends like that. I got a lot of friends in the black community. I know a lot of people like that, but they come out to the streets, and you know, event realistically, most of it's about like you know, same thing a street gangs doing, selling drugs and stuff. But some of them are really serious about that stuff, though. Some of them are really religious and serious about it, but. The uh, I was gonna say, like, I wanted to ask you a question. Like, in Harlem, like, they got the re gentrification thing where they take out of the old Harlem, they build Starbucks yeah. and stuff. Like, yeah. like, now, now, the little Italy, I heard like it's only like four or five stores, like, it's almost gone. Well, little Italy's still there, it's about actually like four or five streets. Um, but that's like a tourist thing now, you know, you go down there for the fair and this time of year actually the fair is like in two weeks they have the italian fair there's still the italian like restaurants there but i don't know it, it just feels like a place for tourists you know chinatown still chinatown you know like chinatown still has a lot of huge asian community um lots of asian businesses that sell like fake bags and all that good stuff you know <laughs> but uh Little Italy is just like a like a tourist place now, you know, where you, people want to go. I I believe it's still owned by some of the old Italians. It's very expensive to own anything there. But Harlem, Harlem changed, man. Harlem is crazy. Harlem used to be like oh, crazy. I used to go up there and I used to be able to go in like these candy stores that had a window and you could buy your weed in there and whatever, you know, it was like real open. And that's how it was when I was young. Everything in New York was like an open market. We used to go, like, right, this is crazy. These are stories. I was like 14. And my boyfriend, I don't even know, he was definitely older than me. That's what, so, like, we used to go to uh, billiards, you know, and go play pool. And people would just throw their coke out right there on the pool table, sniff coke and play pool. Oh, out in the open. Open, in the billiards. Like nothing. Nobody would say anything. That's crazy. <laughs> you think about it now, I'm like that is fucking wild. That we used to be like, like it was that like that, you know. And uh, now Harlem is like nice, you know. It's crazy. I don't even think there's any little smoke shops like there used to be. 
I wouldn't walk in a store and just be like, oh, you got some weed? You know, <laughs> like, I, I wouldn't even do it. Like, but back then it was way different. But the projects are still there. You know, I'm sure the business still exists, the, the drug market, but it's way, people are way more quiet about it, you know? It used to go to certain neighborhoods and people would buy, like the, the dealers, like 20, 30 dealers would be fighting over you, you know, in the street, in the open, like nothing. Crazy, yeah. Yeah, Harlem is like um, Disneyland now, all in New York. It's I so just, weird. I don't like it, honestly. I kind of liked when it was dangerous. <laughs> I just watched some guy, I just watched some guy get out of his car and walk into a Burger King. And yeah. he had some sort of uh, physical disability, like when he walked, he was limping. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I thought, like that, I thought that was pretty courageous, you know, knowing that people, knowing that there's people out there's there's people out there who would, who are rude, who would laugh at somebody like that. You yeah. know, that, to wake up, that must be pretty courageous to wake up every day and have to go out into the world and have an obvious problem with you like that. Like when he walked, he was like wobbling, like limping. Yeah. And yeah. that must be pretty courageous to go out into the world every day knowing that there's people laughing at you and just keep, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, that, that made me, right, like when I was a little kid, I, when I was a little kid and I had seen them, I probably would have laughed. But now that I'm old, you know, now that I'm, now that I'm older, I realize that that's what, there's nothing funny about that. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, one day I was with my daughter and we were in like the, what is that called, like the field or something? The Dollar General store, the one that has things for five dollars. That one. I don't know. We were just standing there. I was looking at stuff, and my daughter looks over and sees a woman with cancer. She was five years old, like just started kindergarten. She was like, "Mommy, why is that baby to her should I tell you know I think she knows this is a child you know I felt horrible about it <laughs> I mean I still like it's like five years later and I still remember it you know it, it's not even sometimes people say things they don't even realize you know they don't even realize you know what they're saying you know here's an example my friends my daughter's friend has a little brother right he got some kind of deformity in his in his ankle I'm an adult, and I didn't even realize when I first met the kid. I was like, "Oh, like it looked to me like when you look at it real quick, you think like the kid got hurt, like he got a big bump on his ankle, you know." So my husband did it too. Like when he met him a year or two later, I was like, "Oh my God, don't do that!" Like he has a problem, you know. Hey. But <laughs> we both reacted, and we're adults. Like, oh my God, what's wrong with his foot? You know. You know. You know what? I think like okay. You know how they got. You know what? I think is you know how people talk about the Anunnaki and the extraterrestrials? Yes. Like from what I researched, the extraterrestrials that came here and created yeah. and, and created and helped to like mingle with humans and create humans and create and co-create humans and create Atlantis and Lemuria. I don't think the people like when people talk about like the Illuminati and all that stuff in today's world, I don't think they really know what was going on. Like the people, like the secret societies that they have in Washington and New York, and the pe the people who own all these world banks, and they look at humans as like you know they can control humanity. I don't think they really comprehend fully what happened with with, with like ancient civilizations, extra extraterrestrials. I don't think they have as many answers as what they think, and I think they look like they probably go to channelers, like people who channel and do astrology and stuff. They probably, yeah. they, like, they're trying to find out more information about what's going on. Yeah. And I think there's actual humans, like, like you know how we go on YouTube and we talk about, like, reptilians and all that stuff, like regular people do? Like yes. Like, we speculate on the Anunnaki and the Illuminati and reptilian stuff. I think they're, I think they might be afraid of those reptilian things. I think they know those reptilians are real and they don't, they don't really comprehend what the reptilians are but they know they're real and i think they're i think they're more afraid of all this stuff than regular people are because it ain't nothing to me like to me and you if there's real reptilians 
and there's extraterrestrials and they're coming and going there's ancient Atlantis that's not gonna hurt me or you what, what how's yeah. that gonna hurt us it's gonna hurt the people who are in control of the banks the people who are in control of politics they're the people it's gonna hurt because they're gonna lose more the public's gonna lose more faith in them and they're gonna lose more power yeah like what are you doing about this yeah, right I, right like yeah, like yeah, like if some reptil like if some reptilian extraterrestrials or some reptilians under the ground just showed up and started walking around it wouldn't really you know i'm sure there'd be people who would go crazy and lose their mind but it wouldn't really it wouldn't really bother me they ain't hurting me you know what i'm saying no, they haven't. You know what I'm saying? Like if some reptilians just showed up and just started walking around and talking to people, the only people it would hurt is the people who want to manipulate humans. Yeah. The, the people trying to control the banking, the people controlling the politics, the people in secret societies, those people are afraid. Because... Well, what do you think... Do you think the Earth... Do you think civilization is as old as they try to say? Like, do you believe in evolution? Because I don't. Like, I don't... Believe I think it's oh I think like 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 this is what I think I think you had a, I think you had like a type of species that were similar to humans kind of like cave people like monkey type people and I think some extraterrestrials came yeah. along and, and mixed their DNA and started creating a different species and and that's just how I feel I could you know I could be wrong but that's just how I see it yeah I don't believe in the evolution how humans went from being like nothing like 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 you know a, a like a piece of dust to being what they are now you know yeah no no i think well the thing that really kind of breaks like breaks up the whole evolution thing is we haven't evolved in the last two thousand years i had uh wisdom teeth like why the fuck do i need wisdom teeth like i don't chew on sticks anymore <laughs> like why the hell do i have this second pair of teeth in the back coming that most people have to get them out because they don't even need them they they still have their molars because we know how to take care of our teeth now and they wind up messing up your teeth and causing you a lot of pain if we would have been evolved we would have probably not no longer had a use or our body would have no longer made the wisdom teeth and the other thing was we probably wouldn't have to wear clothing still you know what i mean our bodies would evolve to this um climate that we are in you know we wouldn't have to wear clothes we would have fur or some kind of thicker skin for protection you know what i'm saying like our bodies would have evolved by now in the last two thousand years so I'm not sure I really buy evolution because we're not, we're still not made for this environment, you know. In fact, we were probably better off as monkeys. <laughs> right. I think yeah. they're all scared. I think, like, I hear what you're saying. Like, like, uh, if we were evolving naturally, we would have been involved in something else. But like, as far as like, you know, the the Freemasons, all these corporations and stuff, I yeah. think that I think they're scared. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to keep people dumbed down and stupid. They're scared. Because people, they yeah. need they need people, but people don't need them. I don't need no fucking secret society to help me. No, what what do I, you know what I'm saying? They're not doing nothing for me. That's why I'm skeptical about any of their theories about the shape of the earth, space, whatever. You know, things that I can't personally prove. I cannot personally make a rocket. So I can't really get out of space and really look and see where I am, you know? So I, I can look at that as, that's just a theory. I don't work for NASA. I can't go up in space. So I have to take their word for it. So when I have to take somebody's word for it and I can't experience it myself, it's as good as having faith like you would in a religion, right? So we're all programmed. Like we're, you know, we're programmed to believe these things. Where was I going with that? Oh, okay, but... Their symbolism is pretty freaking telling. You know what I mean? Like, why do we have the Star of David on our money? Like, those little things. I believe there are people that have the blueprints. They know the secrets. There's somebody. There's some bloodline, older bloodline probably, that's been passing the secrets down. I'm Irish. And during the potato famine, uh, we had a lot of Celtic before then. There was a lot of beautiful Celtic books. And they call us, you know, Irish people, the land of saints and scholars. Why was it so important for the English to come through Ireland and burn all of our books? The only book that's left is the Book of Kells 
I saw it. It's in um, Trinity University in Dublin. It's every day they go in and they change a page. And it has all those like Celtic knot drawings, you know. I, when the day I was there, I saw a dragon, and it was all it's all written in Celtic. I didn't, you know, you can't read it, but other people can. But why would why is it so important? Why why have they been erasing our history? And it's not just my people, all of our people. That's why they kind of like want us not to identify who we were or where our people come from. They kind of want us to forget who we were, you know? I think I think our ancestors might have known some of the secrets, you know? That's why they want us to all intermingle, mix, and lose, you know? They say, I don't know how bibl- how much of the Bible you believe, but there were seven tribes at one point. And um, there, there's probably secrets in our original tribes, you know? If you're targeted, I definitely believe you have some kind of bloodline some kind of magic, you know, in your bloodline. I want to get a, I wish we can get a hold of one of these people and just beat the fuck out of them and find out what they know. Like somebody, <laughs> like, like somebody, like one of these motherfuckers, one of these little preppy ass motherfuckers who, who, who lives in some sort of family who has all the stuff. I wish we can get a hold of them and just beat his goddamn fucking ass and find out everything. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, I know. Definitely. Little fucking sitting back, sitting back manipulating people and controlling people. I break his goddamn. I take, bust his goddamn, break his goddamn fucking jaw, find out everything he knows, and, and throw his fucking ass in Lake Michigan. You know. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know I, what I'm I, saying? I, yeah, definitely. That's I, what people know. need to do. People, people, people. Pe- that'd be funny. If, that'd be funny if a bunch of people got together and went up in a Freemasonic lodge and found the and found the oldest Freemasons, just beat one of their fucking asses and found out everything. Yo, one day. Yeah, definitely. One day I went to this, I went to buy, I buy antiques and I sell them. So I went to this place in Patterson, New Jersey, which is only like a half hour from New York City. Patterson was the capital of like lace and textiles back in the day. So Patterson's ghetto is hell. And I'm an ex-addict and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I really want to go there. <laughs> but I did, you know, I was like, it's all right. I'm, I'm a big girl, I can handle it. So I, I was like, not sure where the hell I was going and I get there and it's like a freaking old mansion you know like with the old like from the 1900s early 1900s beautiful woodwork like I was amazed with the house that I went to on the wall he had a big mason poster uh it was antique and I was like wow that's a masonic that's masonic and he was like the man was Korean but I believe he bought this house with all the antiques because he gave me a little bit of a history. He was like, the man that owned this house had the biggest lace factory in Patterson. And he was telling me it used to have a pool. And, you know, now it's the city. There's more houses around him and stuff. So he was, like, giving me the history. And when I walked up to that poster, he was like, wow, you know what the Masons are? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> you know. But he said that thing that he owned, he was like, it's really hey. important. 